Yo guys, what's going on? This is Yoki Man here and welcome to a brand new series here. We're back with career mode on FIFA 21 for the first time since the Bayer Leverkusen save. If you haven't checked that out, go and check it out. It's fantastic. We are Mr. Yorkie Man going to be taking over here at Villarreal for this one. I thought it was something a little bit different. We'll do the Liga. I've never actually done the Liga before on FIFA, so a little bit of something different. And we're going to try and build ourselves to be a dominant side here and break up the monopoly that is the two Madrid sides and obviously Barcelona. Hopefully, we're the man for the job. Now, in this episode, we're going to go through the squad. We're going to look at the players. I'm not going to do too much transfer business because that's where I need you guys. Give me your advice on players to sign bear in mind the budget though when i do show you it and some of the positionals just that we need and that's about it let's get into it let's meet the squad first and foremost and see what we're working with here at Villarreal. i always get a little bit nervous when i come to this screen so i haven't assessed the squad at all now i do already notice that we've got 45 players so we've got a lot of players and i haven't had the opportunity to really get to grips with knowing anything pretty much about Villarreal, apart from where the yellow submarine so hopefully we're going to have some decent players. Now, it's already looking good at goalkeeper. I'm pretty happy with that. We've also got a backup goalkeeper, which is a young Swede. There's no problems with that. At left back, we're pretty decent as well. We've got a couple of players out on loan. We've got Pedraza. We've got Costa. The big thing for me will be is how quick these players are. That's probably going to be the situation that we need to be looking at. But I'll go through that individually. We've got Costa. We've got some good left backs. This is going to be different because... I am not going to be able to say some of the names. Purvis is what? That's a terrible name. Alberto Moreno as well in the squad. Ex-Arsenal. He was bad for Arsenal as well. So we've absolutely got way too many left-backs. I think already, by knowing we've got a 45-man squad, there's going to be some money here now. Pau Torres, fantastic. Albiol, fantastic. Is 34, though, so... You know, time is coming up for him. And we've got quite a few there out on loan as well. Funes More, not for me, really. One Foyf, I believe, is on loan from Tottenham. So we'll see how he gets on. Maybe good for this season and then potentially we sign him. Uh, De La Funtra, I'd never heard of him. So decent again at centre-back. We've got noticeably two centre-backs that we definitely want to play. And then if I'm being 100% honest... Nobody else tickles my fancy. We're weak if we're not playing Pau Torres or Albiol. So that's a bit of a problem issue for us already. We've got a couple of right-backs here out on loan. We've got Ratu, Lanchi again. Some of these are young. Some of these probably will never make it. But Mario Gaspar, very good right-back. He'll be very good for us for at least a couple of seasons. Penner as well, another good right-back. So we're decent at right-back. We're decent at left-back. Centre-back, though, is a little bit of a problem area for us. We're going to have to pick someone up at centre-back. CDMs. Now, I don't know if we'll play a CDM, but... Probably one of my favourite players in the Leverkusen save was a CDM in, in Maximilian Arnold. So maybe we'll get a bit of luck. Abora, though, very good CDM again. A little bit older than we'd like here. Kapue as well. He's a good centre centre mid slash CDM. Um, he's going to be strong there for us in the centre of midfield. So I'm actually quite excited to get to use him. Again, the situation there being that he's a little bit on the older side. We will look at left midfielders. We've got Mao Gomez. Never heard of this player before. Looks all right. And on... On Viterius, Javier, I know he used to play for Malaga and was very good for them. So maybe he'll be good for us. He could progress pretty well. We've got Coquelin, Parejo again, getting on a little bit Parejo, but he could be our maestro there in the center of midfield. Again, Francis Coquelin, very strong player. Good player to have. Tagueras as well, good player to have. Good engine in him. Yamiri, Rabba, and the main man for me, Samuel Chukwizi. I'm very excited at using this guy. He's showing great potential, and he's absolutely rapid. If you haven't used him this year on FIFA, you should at least know about this man. He is absolutely rapid, so I'm excited to get to use him. So we probably won't be using the formation we were using before that I was with Leverkusen. That was very narrow. I want to play something different with this team. And already, though, when we look at the right mid, I'm hoping there's some right wingers. Apart from Samuel, there's not really anyone there that I'm liking the look of. We've got Hassan, Buena, so we don't have any left wingers, so already I'm noticing that we're very weak on the left-hand side. That could be a problem for us. And on the right-hand side, we basically... Although he's young, he's a young man, 18 year of age. Was Buena, 18 year of age as well. So, I mean, he's showing great potential as well, which is a good sign from Alex. But a big problem for me there is, if we're playing Samuel on the right, who am I playing on the left? It'd be Moy Gomez, I would imagine. It, he's really the only option. So, weak at centre-back, weak at wingers, in my opinion, there. Definitely have a lot of uh, fodder here to get rid of. We've got Nino, 19, showing great potential. So, he's someone who we'll look to keep around. Jack Harper. We've got a Scotsman at loan at Villarreal. Is this... Okay. 
Interesting. Didn't expect to see that. Maybe we might just play him for the meme that he's a Scotsman. I'm not noticing a cam either, so we're probably going to go without a cam, which is a shame because I do like playing with a cam. We've got Carlos Backer as well, 33 as well. But another issue with the squad probably is the age, and uh, they're getting on a little bit now, these players. Although I'm pretty sure Carlos Backer will still be absolutely rapid. He was rapid before. Not bad balance, jumping, sprint speed's awful, so... Really going to be the fox in the box. Maybe a little bit of a poacher. That is a little bit worrying. That is a little bit worrying. But Paco Alcancer, I mean, need not say no more. He's absolutely superb. I'm really looking forward to using Al uh, Alcancer. I was a huge fan of him when he had that unbelievable season there at Borussia Dortmund. I'm excited about using this man. We've got Mario Gonzalez, who's out on loan. Probably won't get played. And Gerard Moreno as well. So it's already looking like we could have a two-man partnership because how do you leave out Moreno or Alcacer? I feel like both of them probably do need to be playing. So we will have to devise a formation that is going to utilize both of them, which could be interesting because I'm already trying to figure out in my head how we do that. Whether one of them may be dropped down to Cam. I mean, Gerard Moreno apparently can play on the right wing. What His dribbling is good enough to play on the wing. He's got all right crossing, I suppose. What's his sprint speed? 77. Maybe we could get away with Gerard Moreno out on the wing, but I feel like we won't be utilizing what he's best at. And uh, Simon Moreno as well. I don't know if they're family or they're related. I mean, they kind of look alike. I guess, I suppose. So that'll be the squad. Not a bad squad. Not a bad squad. But again, we've just noticed instantly there that there's some areas were weak. So let's see what a base formation is. This is what they've got us playing, which isn't bad because, again, it utilizes those midfielders. But I'm just not happy there with Moreno on the right. So I'm going to try and come up with a formation now that I think will suit us best. So this is what I've come up with. It's not, it's not ideal. I've never, ever played this formation before. We're going with four at the back, a CDM, a center mid, two strikers, and then a right mid and a left mid. So, I mean, if you guys have got any experience with this, let me know. Uh, we're we're going to find out if it's any good, obviously, as we go through our journey on this save. But I feel like when you've got two strikers in Moreno and Alcancer, we might not stick with this. You've kind of got to give it a go. And we're not great in midfield. You know, replacements here, we've got a Bora, which is fantastic. I'm happy with that. And then with Parejo, we've got Coquelin. So that, that's basically the situation. We've got two good replacements for those two there, and then we're a little bit weak. At left back, we, we've got way too many. I mean, at the end of the day, we've got too many. We've got Esputin, who might literally be sold because I can not say that name. I can. We know. If you've, if you've watched the channel for a while, names, they're not what I'm good at. No, I can't say that. I can say Costa, Pedraza, and Moreno. So someone's got to go. There's no need for us to have four left backs. To be honest with you, the way I usually build a team, I'd be happy with just two left backs. But we've tweaked the sliders again so that there is injury. So we'll see how that suits us. But again, we, I mean, we've got some good players. The bench isn't bad. There's some good young players there that I might look to give game time. But in reality, I'd love to sign a few players. And on signing players, we need to know what our budget's going to be. Now, this is the part I was ultimately excited about. And upon seeing the budget, it's not bad. It's not bad. I don't think we need as much wage budget as we've got. We probably need more towards like that. So we probably got roughly about 35 million. I think if we were making logical moves, we, we probably would be going for, you know, players potentially for the future. Anywhere between like the 75 and 80 range. I don't know what the board's expectation is for us actually in the league this year. That would be a good idea to find that out. Let's see what it is. Continental success. So we are in the Europa League and they want us to win it, which is absolutely madness cheers board cheers fifa board and they want us to finish in a champions league place which i believe is top four so i mean realistic objectives there from the board fantastic news there for us so i mean it's not going to be easy i'm not really sure how we stack up in the league let's see how the season's going to open for us i genuinely don't know how we stack up in this league in the in the Liga. We are going to take on Valladolid, I believe that is, Elche and Valencia in the opening month of the season while we can still make transfers. I'm I'm a little bit nervous. Who is in our Europa League? Oh, wow, this is a rough month. Sociedad, Sevilla and Real Madrid that month. Great. Can't wait to record that one. So we've got um, Sparta, Rotterdam, CSKA, Moscow and uh, Bromby, Longby, Bromby. Uh, answers on a postcard. So we've got those teams. So it's a group we should get out of. It's definitely a Europa League group we should get out of. And given the past, we did actually win the Europa League season one there with Leverkusen. Spoiler alert. So hopefully we'll be all right. Now I'm going to have to go away and do the actual training. And I would love 
to get to as far as the first La Liga game. I'd, I'd like to play the first game here against Valladolid. And then it leaves the next episode with some more transfers and those. I do tend to like to use the scouting network instead of individually sh uh, scouting for players. And basically use you guys as my individual scouts. You're going to come to me and bring individual players that we will then search for. So I will utilize this system and... Hopefully it's good. I mean, I wouldn't mind Ika Mooney in. He's a very good player. Hopefully this system works for us. Lucas Vasquez did very well for us before. But yeah, hopefully the system works for us. I'm going to take a look at some players now and see what the scouts already brought us and also set up some, well, just some better scouting for us. You know, looking for players that we actually need. Now, on the plus side, we've actually got quite a few scouts and we've got some available. So we're already scouting Spain, Germany and Italy. I'd be a fool not to scout England, wouldn't I, really, if we're being honest. And probably France. Probably France makes sense, right? There's some decent good young players in France. So we will go to France as well. And I believe that'll be the opening nations. I don't want to spend any more money on a scout at the moment. Considering this probably won't be the world's longest series either. I don't really want to break the bank and spend a load of money on youth scouts. They've already gone out looking for some promising young players. Now, apparently these guys are promising. What I'm seeing so far is a bunch of players I haven't really heard of before. I'm pretty sure I've heard of Jota, though. So, okay, yeah, we'll give him a scout. That'd be decent. And I know about Arby. Now, Hi Hiroki Arby. Probably saying it wrong. But uh, he's very good on Football Manager. But he's not as good as he was last year. So let's see what he's like on FIFA. Already here, he's going to be rapid. So he, I'm sold. I'm kind of already sold. And imagine the shirt sales. I'm a big believer in a lot of shirt sales. And we've got first team quality and playmaker. We've got Robert Torres there, Lucas Vasquez, who we're instantly going to remove Vasquez. I don't really want to re-sign players we've used already. William Carvalho, I am a fan of. I don't think it's a position we need to strengthen straight away. And Ika Mooney in is definitely a player I'd love to sign, but it's quite obvious there that he's way above our price range and what we've really got the ability to sign. I think it's going to end up being younger players this year. I, I don't think we're going to be able to have the bankroll to sign players like that. Jan Kuto, a very good player, but I believe is on loan from Manchester City. I would like him, though. I'm gutted he doesn't have a player face, but he'd be very good for us. Now, usually in the Youth Academy, you'd get one absolutely supremely good player, and we didn't. We didn't. We, we just, quite simply, we, we didn't. Um, you usually do get one very good young player. Not this time, though. Not on this, not on this case. Not in this scenario. So, really there. A lot of trash, but it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. Now... I'm going to start listing some players. I don't think there's any need for me to show you everybody I list um, I, and just show you them as they go out because there's going to be a lot of players here in this squad hub that I look, look at and potentially go, I don't know. Now, for me, what would help is if you gave me some advice on what you think we should do about left back. Again, I'm willing to whittle it down to just having three. I would prefer to only have two, but just having three. Um, and, and that's the way I want to go with it. Also... We need some centre-backs. This is probably somewhere where we're looking at being the weakest. A lot of the players here that I'm just going to add to the transfer list, they're just going to be players that, if we're being realistic, are too old to progress and are just not good enough. I mean, I'm quite happy with the two right-backs, but we'll keep Lanchi around just for a bit of experience. Now, I haven't played this. There's been a, there's been a good few patches on career mode since the last time we recorded some career mode. So I'm hoping it's improved. We will add this man to the transfer list as well. And by improved, I mean just some of the glitches they had. And also, I'm hoping the fitness isn't as harsh on players because for me, I feel like it's a little bit too harsh. I've got some decent players, if we're being honest with ourselves. 17-year-old Jeremy. Oh, I'm excited to see what he can do. We've got some good young players. Rabba is just of an age now where I don't think he's going to be good enough for us. Hassan, I'm excited to see what he can do. Same with Bianna. Now, we don't need Jeremy and Bianna to stay so, Rayleigh, they're both showing great potential. Let's see which one I, I kind of prefer at the moment. Decent balance, but he's very slow. Definitely needs to be improved. But he can play left as well, which is definitely helpful. And then what's Bruyne's situation? Again, very similar. They're very, very similar players. He's just a little bit better on the ball. Um, we will loan out Alex. Since he's a little bit older, I'll look to get him game time sooner. We've got Nino here at 19. Jack Harper, who... I feel like maybe we just keep Jack Harper around for the memes and, and we'll just stick with the the center mids, the center center attacks we've got. If we're playing two up top, all it takes is a big injury and we might need to change that. And Fernino, I believe, has good potential. 
So, showing great potential. So, it would be helpful if we could get him some game time this season. So, I don't see Jack Harper really playing. Do you? I mean, he can play on the right-hand side. How quick is he? That's the question. He's not bad, actually. If injuries... He's probably handy to keep around in case we have a few injuries. Of course, now I'm going to have to go and set up all the training. But this is the friendly group. We've got ourselves Chelsea, Leipzig and Gladbach. I really don't care about the friendlies whatsoever. The situation is, though, they do help you with a little bit of match sharpness. So I will do that because we're going to have to do a second string squad um, to train match sharpness when the season actually begins. But for now, off I go playing these friendly, uh, playing this training drills again. So a couple of drills done later and we've got our first transfer offer in for Alfonso Pedraza. Now, we did say we had an issue there, didn't we, at left back? And they've come in with a swap deal. Now, let's see what this swap deal is all about. They reckon we can get anywhere between 10 and 15 million. So, Pedraza could be on his way out. Let's see what they're offering. Hiroki Sakai. Nailed it. Nailed it. Let's see uh, Let's see how good he is. Right back. 30. I've got zero interest in that. Um, for now, we're actually just going to reject that. But I'm open now. I'm open to negotiation when it comes to him. Uh, genuinely, I mean, we can uh, we could get some decent money for him. So we did actually make it through to the knockout stages of the friendly tournament, which means we got a little bit more cash in the bank to spend. A loan offer here for Alex Buena. It is for two years, but I feel like that's good enough for him to progress. We'll send him to Bologna, and hopefully in two years' time, we'll come back to the club and be a better player. Well, crazily, we have been matched up here against Leverkusen in the semi-finals which is fantastic our old side i don't think we'll beat them we are very tired and we do we lose 2-0 we lose 2-0 bailey missed the penalty as well but it is what it is i wasn't expecting to win that and they'll play a german side in the final in gladbach transfer offer in for the right back andrea ratu it's time for him to go i mean he was never gonna play he could play right back and right wing actually but he was never gonna get game time here at 22 and 63 overall just not good enough also a transfer in now for romerio guerrera they are offering us what they're offering him 1.1 i'm happy with that 1.15 i'm really happy with that we'll accept that bit as well hopefully both of these boys will be leaving the club very soon the squad obviously was extremely bloated and it's very difficult to get them all match sharpness more than anything also going to change Hassan's development. We're going to set it to be just left midfielder instead of left winger. So he's in the correct position. I just noticed he could really do with being better physically, couldn't he? If we're being 100% honest. Let's do the development plan and we'll change him over. I think we'll change Jeremy as well to um, right mid instead of right wing. We'll take 59 weeks, which I find really strange because Hassan can already play left mid. It's one of his positions that he can play, but it kind of is what it is. Let's see how long it takes for Jeremy to do his. I hope it's not a similar length of time. I'm pretty sure they could play similar positions. Let's see what the situation is here. So he's right winger already. I want him to play... Where's right mid? Oh, he's already right mid. I thought he was a right winger. Oh, he's already right mid. Okay, no worries about that. So weird because it does say here that he can play left, mid left midfield. It's going to take him 59 weeks for him to be a natural playing left midfield. Strange. Unfortunately, Andrea Ratu is going to be with us a little bit longer as he has turned down the agreement to go to Tondela. Apparently, he doesn't like it there. He doesn't want to go to Portugal. So, he accepted another offer for Ratui from FC Zurich, and he's gone now, finally. We've also got an offer here for Danny Araba. Uh, it's a decent offer, actually. They reckon we could go to 4.1. I'm going to actually negotiate this. He's 24. There's a bit of potential there. See if we can get some more cash for him. So, I wanted four. We managed to get 3.5. I'm pretty happy with that deal. Some more money in the bank for us to spend on. Hopefully, some top quality players. So, we've got our eyes here on a few young centre-backs for the future, definitely. Mohamed Simakan, Bennett Barriashiel, and Matsima. All players I want, to be honest with you. All of them I want. Two of them on us, uh, from Monaco, one from Strasbourg. The one from Strasbourg has been approached by Schalke. So, I think we're going to go in for him now, regardless. I still wouldn't mind signing one of the other centre-backs as well as future proof in that position. We're going to go in for Simakan now simply because Schalke have gone in for him and I do not want to lose out on him. They reckon between 8.6 and 11.9, he has got uh, good potential. See what kind of a deal we can uh, broker here to pick him up. Well, I'm just going to go in there. I'm just going to be straight up and off a nine. I feel like that's in the kind of the midpoint of probably what they want for him now they want a player exchange now what's the player exchange actually there they want pedraza and 2.8 million that is kind of tempting that's kind of tempting i think we're going to do this deal we're going to do this deal i think 
Pedraza is we need to we need to get rid of a left back. We need to get rid of a left back. This deal kind of works for us. We bring in a good, talented French centre back, one who could be great for the future, and we get rid of a left back when we're a little bit bloated in that position. I feel like that's a smart move. We're going to submit the offer. Yeah, we're going to make this deal happen. I'm, I'm really happy with that deal. Let's see if Pedraza can discuss some kind of negotiation when it comes to a contract. Oh, it's already done. That's it. We don't have to worry about him discussing a contract. Okay, we can go straight into the wage. I didn't realize that. Let's offer him a wage. I thought we'd have to wait. Seems a bit silly, right? I thought we'd have to wait for the contract to come back. He wants sporadic. Absolutely fine by me. He wants four years. Again, obviously, absolutely fine by me. He wants a release clause of 24.1 million, although I would rather not have that. We're going to give him a release clause. I think where we can, and where I can get realistic release clauses, we will. Let's see if he'll go up to 29. He won't. We will accept it. Where I can, I would love to give release clauses. We're in the Spanish league, of course. Th there has to be release clauses in this league. But unfortunately, on FIFA, after doing a bit of research, the release clauses aren't fantastic. But we'll go with that. He's on 14 grand already. So, I mean, I, I think we just go up there and we just say 15 grand. It's not like he's making a huge step up in clubs. Hopefully, he doesn't turn his nose up at this. And he's reasonable, so he's happy. So, we've got ourselves a new centre-back. Really happy with that deal. And the first signing of this Villarreal save. Welcome in, Mohamed Simakan. I'm, I'm actually I'm genuinely really, really happy with that deal. I think he's going to be great for us. Real Bet is coming in now for Sergio Asensio. And my only problem is we've got two very top-quality goalkeepers we don't need two very quality top class goalkeepers because let's be honest, how often do you swap your goalkeeper on FIFA? We need one high quality one and then one youngster. Um, this is something we're going to have to mull over, but I will leave it with you. Do you think we should get rid of one of the goalkeepers? There's Maury and there's Essential. I'm going to leave it for now because we've only got a day before the game and the game is going to be the final thing we do in this episode. So... I'll leave it with you guys. What do you reckon? I kind of feel like that could be a good... I'd definitely get more money than the 18 million, but I kind of feel like that could be a good decision for us to make. When we've already got Funes Mori, we, again, who is 81 rated. We don't need two top-class goalkeepers. Just quite simply put, in real life, obviously you do, but in the game, you certainly don't. And we've got Jorgensen, the young Swede. Maybe it's a smart decision, but let me know, guys. So here we go. First game of the season coming up against Valladolid, and I'm excited for it, lads. I'm really excited for it. Strong lineup, obviously, as you would expect. We It's one game a week at the moment for us, so there's no stress with the Europa League football, and I want to get this first team as much match sharpness and fitness. We're going to get the opportunity to use these players for the first time, and you know how this goes, man. It's a bumpy road at the start of these career modes when you're trying to learn the squad. And bear in mind, the only FIFA I've played for the last month is pro clubs let's get it let's hopefully get our first victory against Valladolid well it's been a little while but we have yet returned to FIFA and what I like about La Liga is there's a lot of licensing here in La Liga that's what I like about that including quite a lot of stadium which is fantastic I am thinking that the French League is somewhat licensed as well so that would be a league for us to look at and then of course the Premiership and the road to glory that potentially we might do in the future. But the main focus right now is day one of La Liga. It's Villarreal. And it's hopefully getting a victory in our first game. We'll kick off a new save and we kick off a new season. And we kick it off with high hopes of a decent finish this season. I think it'd be shocking if we didn't at least get Europa League again. The team getting Europa League, of course, last season. A competition that we'll look to go as far as possible in. Spanish clubs have a great history in that competition we'll look to have a great history ourselves let's see what pace chukwizi has got Chukwizi on the ball fires off the shot not strong enough but we are going to end up with a football back and a corner the first corner of the game for Villarreal valid the lead certainly a side I do fancy us against certainly a side we should be looking at and getting the three points against well let's see what we can do from the corner and who we've got up there I used to be very good at these Let's see if I still am. It's not a bad ball in. He's wide open. Gerard Moreno nearly gets his first goal of the campaign. And his first goal under Yorkie, man. And that would have been exciting. We're going to end up with a throw in here. And valid the lead under huge amounts of pressure here in the early stages of this one. Huge amounts of pressure. Mario Gaspar now will relay that to Danny Prejeo with the shot. What a goal! Prejeo with his first goal under the reign of Yorkie, man. What a hit that is. 
What an absolute screamer that is. And the pressure was heavy on Valid the lead to start the match. They definitely can't match us and Preheo with what can only be seen as an absolute cracker of a shot. And if you're if you're telling me that this is the first goal I've got to score in this series, then I am overjoyed because that is absolutely wonderful. Look at me. I'm living the good life on the sideline with a flat cap. Danny Pareo, six minutes in, via Real on top. I must admit, this stadium is lovely. The sound in the stadium is lovely. The beating of the drum. I'm loving this. It's very tight in as well. It's very closed in. We could have some lovely European nights here. Some lovely European nights. And hopefully, they're going to get to see some wonderful football here from us. And we're going to fire that one to Chuck Wheezy. He couldn't get a good enough touch on it. I'm hoping I'm saying that right in Chuck Wheezy. I could be saying it completely wrong. But I'm hoping I'm saying it right. And he may win the ball back here. And he does win the ball back. And he's dangerous. We know that already. He did floats that one up towards the back post. And we can't just quite make it. And it's a terrible header back from him. Good opportunity here. And again, still piling on the pressure. We're going to win the ball back again here now. Paco Elconser. Back to Gerard Moreno. To try and make it 2-0. Well said by Massett, but he's going to be fuming. He's going to be wondering what his side are trying to do to keep themselves in this match. Well, another corner. Dangerous from the last one. Maybe we can be dangerous from this one. I already can feel that Gerard Moreno is going to be fun to get the ball to on these corners. And we're going to do exactly the same again. Try and hit that area where Gerard Moreno can kind of occupy. It's not going to be towards him this time. And we can't get our heads on it. Espian, if I'm saying that right or wrong, we'll never know until you guys correct me. I'm assuming I'm saying it wrong. Can they break away now, though, Valid the lead? I am known for conceding from very little. Then we are going to give away a free kick. We are not going to give away a free kick as they pile forward. We've got bodies back nicely, though. Roque Mensa now. Oh, he's done very well. I thought we was about to give away a penalty there. Oh, poor defending from us. Very poor defending. Valid the lead now with an opportunity, potentially. And luckily for us, we've collected the ball. And let's be calm with it. And start working our way forwards again. Perejo there. There's a beautiful pass down this side. Moy Gomez now is going to try and find Perejo again. We're not going to be able to find it, but it's going to find Gerard Moreno. But it's a poor touch from him. Very heavy. Not what you expect from our striker. I don't know who will be our star striker this season either. Will it be Moreno? Will it be Alcancer? Put your bets in now in the comments section. Who do you think will be the top goal scorer this season for Villarreal? Two very good strikers in my opinion. And both of them probably seen very much a lot of game time. Fires that one forward. Gerard Moreno. Get that back from Moy Gomez. Moreno finds his counterpart. And oh, can say, what a turn, what a touch! And it should be 2-0. Should definitely be 2-0 via Real. And we need to make sure we make it too because it's easy to lose a lead. But this first half, we've been rampant. Well, would you believe it? It's another corner here for via Real. See what we could do here. We'll fire this one in. Towards a danger man. There was a danger man. Pau Torres was there to fire off the shot. I'm not sure it was the right choice. Danny Pejo now. What can he do? He does find Coquelin. Sorry, Kapue. Not Coquelin. Chuck Weezy now. We'll try and fire that one back. Kapue. Oh, we'll fire that one down the line. There just wasn't a body in there. The man that fired it down the line was the man we needed in the box. Valid the lead now coming forward with Tony Vila. Can they do now out wide? They've been fairly decent coming forward. They'll just be very disappointing with the amount of opportunities that we've had so far. The amount of chances, and I say that, but they've given the ball straight away here now. Chuck Weezy maybe gets to that. No, it's been fired straight forward. Not the right choice, but Paco Alconser might get to that, and he does, and surely now this will be two. Paco Alconser, oh, what a save. Their goalkeeper is on fire today. He is definitely keeping them in this one. That goal is leaving a charmed life, and valid the lead, certainly will be uh, very happy to keep this one at 1-0. One and I don't know how they've managed it so far. Throwing Valid the lead. Can they do from it? They're going to go long. Because they didn't have any options, really. And they do now. Alcaraz fires that to Tony Villa. And on the turn. And all it took was Guardiola to poke it home. And Villarreal really will be wondering why they didn't give it a, an extra goal lead. Give ourselves the cushion. And there you go. Valid the lead, making it 1-1. Well, the away fans will be ecstatic with that. Villarreal now will know that they need to get themselves back into this. And by back into it, we've been in it all along. We've been by far the better side. I don't know how we haven't scored another, to be honest. That will be the aim now. Try and get ourselves one more. That's a lovely touch. Paco Alcancer waited for the run. Is he on? Gerard Moreno! He's offside. He does make it 2-1, but unfortunately for us, he's offside. Great link-up play, and how close was it? 
It wasn't that good. Well, it was close, but not that close. Well, there we go, guys. Half time and valid the lead. Obviously, going in the happier of the two sides, considering they've been absolutely dominated, but still managed to find themselves with a goal. Danny Prejeo with a wonder strike for us. I do think, though, if we carry on playing like we did that first half and the second, it's only a matter of time before the floodgates open. Valid the lead here now, coming forward. Lovely pass for Mensa and Shawley. And valid the lead have made it 2 1. And could you believe it? What a great bit of play there from them. And they come out in this second half. And they've made it 2-1. Villarreal losing. I don't know how that's managed to happen. Well, they really need to spring into life now, Villarreal. Haven't even touched the ball yet in the second half until now. And it's to dig themselves out of a hole that, really, we've kind of put ourselves in. Should never have been 1-0. Let alone 2. We're going to try and find Gerard Moreno here now. See if we can rescue this. It's not a bad ball back to Gomez. Gomez does his options. There aren't many. Capoue. Nice touch from Alcancer. Gerard Moreno now. On the turn. Not a bad turn. Is he going to be pushed off the ball? He is, but he's going to end up winning it back and then he gives it away. Can he win it back again? Maxi Gomez getting in the way of that, I believe. And we will be able to recycle it. Can we do it now? Saw the run. I saw the run. Just couldn't quite make it. Queasy there. Fires that forward to Paco Alcancer. Alcancer then will fire it back to him. Chukwezi back across. Moreno. Alcancer. What lovely football. Pick the ball up, Paco. He doesn't want to pick it up. It's fine. Go and celebrate, son. What fantastic football there on the counter-attack. It all stemmed from a little bit of Gagan pressing from ourselves. Lovely play in the end. And Paco Alcancer scores. And very unselfish there for Moreno, to be fair. What a finish. Let's go on and get a third. First of all, a substitute. Kapue off. And it bore her on. Well, here they come again. Oh, they've broken us wide open. And it's 3-2. I think they've only had three shots on target. I might need to relearn defending, lads. I might need to relearn defending. Because we were wide open here. I just made the mistake. I brought the centre-back out and missed the tackle. And when you do that, you're going to leave yourself wide open. And wow. There we go. It's 3-2. I can't believe it. Danny Pareo now. He's got the runner of Gomez. Gomez will try and fire that one across. Surely, and there we go. Oh, my God. What a match this is, lads. What a match. I couldn't have asked for a better opening game, really, could I? Only we find ourselves here now at 3-3. I can't really comprehend this, but we've done really well going forward. I certainly need to tighten up on defending a little bit, though. Well, Gerard Moneno now with his first goal for the club under my reign. And we're back to 3-3. And is there a chance here for a 4-3? Trubora now. Paco Elkinser, what can he do? He's got a runner. He's got a runner. He doesn't need it. Paco Elkinser all on his own. And it's well blocked there by Huber in the end. Well, a substitution for them. Plano coming on for Tony Villa. And we'll make one our own. We'll make one our own. We're going to bring on Carlos Baca for uh, Paco Elkinser. Purely out of fitness. Really, to be honest with you, purely out of fitness. Paco had a great game. Let's bring on Carlos Baca. He, he's been a danger. He was a danger when he played at AC Milan. Let's hope he comes on here and can be a danger for us. Well, this thing's just gone out of the game a little bit here. And it'd be lovely if we could figure out a way to get it back into the match. Because we were performing very brightly beforehand. I would say we're not now. Moreno now. Oh, that's lovely. To Gomez. Oh, he just couldn't quite get there. It was such a nice idea. I just think Gomez probably doesn't have the right pace. Just couldn't quite get to it. We are going to win it back here, though, are we not? Elena will actually get it. And here we go now. This is where we've got to be cautious. We can step out a little bit there. We can step out a little bit. Oh, valid the lead with great passing. But in the end, it's led them astray. Abora now. We'll find Chuck Weezy. And now they're in trouble. Now they're in trouble. Samuel Chuck Weezy. We'll try and find that forward. Carlos Baca. Moreno touches it on. But Maxi Gomez has stopped his run. He'd come back. And they're going to lose out in the end. They're not. They're going to get a free kick. Very, very late free kick for Valladolid here. See what they can do from the free kick. I'm hoping not a right lot, if I'm honest with you. It's not a bad ball in. But it's headed wide by Oscar Pliano. Can they do in that position? We're kind of holding them off here. It's been all them. And the full-time whistle is going to go. And smart from Valladolid. The last five minutes of the game was literally them on the ball. We're going to end up drawing this game. It's certainly a game we should have won. We know we should have taken the earlier chances. At least we managed to get three goals in the back of the net. But a little bit of an inquest there into what was going on in defence. Because it wasn't really good enough. What a thriller for a first game of the season, though. I also need to kind of get back to grips with the sliders we had, which does make the opposition 
far better at attacking. Well, their run frequency. So hopefully I can sort that out. But three different scorers, Pareo, Alcancer and Gerard Moreno. Not the worst first result we've ever had. Well, there we go, guys. That is it for episode number one. I really do hope you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was really good fun. That match was absolutely ridiculous. It was a ridiculous game of football. But we've got the first one out of the way. It's clear that we need to make some changes to the squad, though, especially defensively. We've got this young Frenchman. I also do need to do the player instructions as well. We need to figure that out. We need to get them set and sorted. Don't forget to give me your feedback. If you're new around here, please smash subscribe. If you enjoyed the video and the episode, please hit thumbs up. And if you're looking forward to the next one, let me know. It's always nice to hear your guys' feedback. I've been Yorkie Man. I'll see you for episode number two.